This isn't a lava flow or the set of a science fiction film. This is Rio Tinto, the Red River, that runs 100 kilometres long across Andalusia. To learn more about its mysteries, we joined a team of international scientists. An American, two Italians and a Spaniard who think important lessons can be learned from it. Felipe Gomez heads the group. He begins by measuring the water's pH level. The result? 3.5 is striking. This measurement is twice the normal measurement. This is extreme acidity. The river's conditions are unique in the world because the same measurements exist across the river. There are no fish here, no frogs, because they couldn't survive. The river was born from an iron-rich environment. The metal's presence gives the river its colour and acidity. Its uniqueness makes it ideal for the work of these scientists, commissioned by NASA and the European Space Agency. Alessandro, I think this is a really good place to, to unfold the drone and to fly the drone in mm -hmm. order to map in this area. Yeah, I think from uh, the scientific point of view, it's really interesting to, to have some images mm -hmm. from, from the top. So. With the help of the drone, the team surveys the area that strangely resembles another landscape 225 million kilometers away. The, the, the redness of Mars is because of oxidation of iron mainly, and this is the, the word of oxidation. When you see the scarlet color on the drone images due to the presence of iron, as in certain areas of Mars, from the sky you feel like you could be on the red planet. The last stage, collecting rock samples. Time for the scientists to train themselves for space missions. The more we are good in doing this on, on Rio Tinto, the more we will be good scientists to, to detect life on another planet. Because as astonishing as it may seem, life forms can adapt to this environment. To take a look at them, we join Felipe at the Spanish Astrobiology Center where the scientists study what kind of organisms might exist in space. Hola, Maite. Hola. Aquí estoy con las muestras. Muy bien. De... Here are the samples from Rio Tinto. We want to extract DNA, sequence it and carry out a biomolecular analysis. In the last 30 years, groundbreaking work suggests life might have existed on Mars. If we find DNA in the middle of the sediment, that will mean bacteria live in Rio Tinto, and that will allow us to identify the river's biodiversity. The electronic microscope reveals there are life forms in Rio Tinto. Here we can see several types of oval-shaped bacteria. Some of them are more stretched out because they're made up of several bacteria. These microorganisms are perfectly adapted to the extreme conditions of the Red River. These are what we call stone eaters. They oxidize minerals. They don't need organic matter to develop like we do. They give us an idea of what life on Mars would have looked like back when there was water on it and the planet was habitable. Scientists will learn more about those mysteries in 2030, when the Mars robot Perseverance returns with samples from the Red Planet. And the European Space Agency plans to follow up by sending humans to Mars by 2040. A human trip to the planet Mars would last two and a half years. So, we do experiments, here on Earth, in areas which are more or less similar to Mars, like the east of Rio Tinto, for example. The goal is to study how a human being reacts to varying degrees of extreme living conditions. Spain's Rio Tinto offers a little corner of Mars on Earth to the world's astrobiologists and astronauts, hunting for clues to extraterrestrial life.